Hey, welcome to Graphic Policy Television, GPTV. It's Wednesday, which means it's a brand new comic book day, and new comics are hitting the shelves all across the world. You can get them digitally, you can get them physically, you can get them any way you want. It's a new comic book day. In my hands is the second part of The Witching Hour. This is Wonder Woman number 56. Uh, it's the second part of this crossover that's going on between it, this series and Justice League Dark. Uh, you definitely want to read the Wonder Woman Justice League Dark Witching Hour number one, which is out last week, and we did a review. Uh, basically, for those who don't know the story, uh, magic is all kind of screwy in the world. Uh, Hectate wants to get her power back, and she's basically killing all these witches doing it. Uh, Wonder Woman's kind of one of the marked people, and they got to go and, and basically fight a god is kind of what it comes down to it. So they're trying to figure out that this, this issue is about them figuring out the plan. So, uh, creative team. We got James Tinney as the writer, Emmanuel, uh, Emanuela Lupicino is the pencils, Ray McCarthy's inks, R Romeo Fajardo Jr.'s color, Dave Sharp letter, uh, Yasmin Putri cover, Jenny Furson's variant, um, Dave Walgals is the assistant editor, Chris Conroy is the editor, and Jamie S. Rich is the group editor. Uh, basically, this is kind of the issue where they all, the team regroups and says, well, how, where do we go from here? Uh, the th it's not a bad issue. I think the Witching Hour story as a whole seems to be really interesting and kind of fascinating to see where it goes uh, and what its long-term impact will be on the DC Universe. I think the only issue I really have with this is the fact that it's crossing over to a bunch of comics. Uh, if it was just released as in one Justice League Dark, it would be totally fine. Uh, in fact, I probably would prefer to just do it in Justice League uh, Dark and make it, make it like the storyline. Um, there's nothing really right now that stands out to me that makes it that it should be bouncing between a bunch of series. Uh, the only really excuse is that you get it done that much quicker, uh, in which case maybe double ship Justice League Dark instead. It's it's a good issue. Like I, I do like a lot of building the magic aspect into Wonder Woman's history and past. It does feel like out of all the characters out there for DC, that's not one that I would not naturally think of as magical. Wonder Woman really does have a good tie into that. Uh, and, like, you could easily spin that. The, the thing that I think I really enjoy out of this series, just like I like out of Justice League Dark, is the interaction of everyone. Constantine, Zatanna, Swamp Thing, Detective Chimp, Man Bat, like, they all rock it together in Wonder Woman. They all are really, really good together. There's just this solid... Uh, interaction and and they play well off each other personality wise and characters all that so um i really really enjoy that this also throws in dead man into the mix as well i don't know if he's going to become a regular character in just league dark kind of hope so but it's another solid addition i really don't know where this event's going but it's good i mean basically if you care about magic and dc universe go for this, like, that's kind of what this is about, like, if you really have been enjoying Justice League Dark, you're going to enjoy this event, if you like Wonder Woman, it might get you into D to Justice League Dark, which is worth it, but, um, the art's good, I mean, it's kind of, it's been consistent, um, I maybe wish it was a bit more horror tinge to it, which might sound weird, but hopefully you know what I'm talking about, uh, it's, it's good, it's a little bit darker, and it has more of a horror tinge than, like, maybe the average, um, Superhero comic, and the main Justice League Dark definitely has a horror tinge to it. But the issue as a whole, I think it was lacking that a little bit, where the opportunities it could have done, uh, done could have used it. Uh, so overall, like it's a good second part. Really fascinating to see where it all goes. Good art. If you're digging the event, pick this up. If you aren't digging the event, no reason to pick this up. Don't start here, though. You're going to want to get the, the Justice League Dark, Wonder Woman Justice League Dark number one that's already come out. So this is out in comic shops. Today, you can go and use the link beneath this video to find a comic shop near you, put in your zip code, tell your shops near you, no shop, no problem. We got affiliate links. There are affiliate links, so we get a small percentage. Go support your comic shop, though. Like, always support your comic book shop. Um, they are the backbone of the industry, and that's where you should be purchasing from, first and foremost. I want to thank DC for going to up with the review copy. As always, we appreciate it. Uh, thank you for your support, and thank you for watching your support as well. If you are into DC Comics, Comics in General, check us out every single day. At graphicpolicy.com, you can find us at uh, Graphic Policy at uh, Tumblr, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. All uh, consistent. Make it easy that way. Until next time, keep reading those comics and keep it geeky.
Hey, thanks for watching the previous video from Graphic Policy Television. Just by watching, you help support our site. Thank you so much. Now, if you're watching these videos, you probably care about geeky things like movies, television, comic books, toys, games, video games, you name it. You can go and subscribe right now to our YouTube channel to stay in touch and catch all the new videos, or check out our website at graphicpolicy.com. There's a nice link on this end of the video. But as always, thank you for watching. Keep on rocking and keep it geeky.